Hi, this is Steve Downs. I want to thank you very much for joining our video today on employment rights in Santa Clara County. Uh, we have a very active practice of law up there. We serve it from both our San Francisco Bay Area offices and from Southern California, Sacramento, and Fresno. So we're well equipped to meet with our Santa Clara County clients anytime, any place in your area. Um, one of the interesting things that I like about practicing law in uh, the San Jose area, Burlingame, uh, San Mateo, uh, those cities, Los Altos, Los Altos Hills, Palo Alto, Redwood City, all the way down as far as south as Watsonville, Gilroy, and Morgan Hill are the very interesting complex employment law cases we get. Some of the issues that you've been reading about or hearing online about whistleblowing and retaliation coming out of Washington, D.C. apply equally to your employment, whether you're in San Jose, Los Angeles, or San Francisco, for that matter. And what a lot of people don't realize is that retaliation can be for complaining about anything that's illegal. Uh, it could be for complaining in good faith, even though there's a mistaken belief about discrimination, about violation of a federal patent or IP protection law, which is also in the California Constitution. And many of our folks from the Santa Clara County area, in fact, have problems with NDAs, non-compete agreements, things of that nature. So first thing to remember is retaliation covers virtually all areas of your employment, uh, as long as there's some underlying illegality. So that's number one. Don't be afraid to raise issues no matter how uh, obtuse you believe they are. Health and Safety Code, for example, in California, talks about protection of patient safety. Being retaliated against for standing up for patient safety, Health and uh, Safety Code 1287.5, helps you in that field. Um, uh, we have what is called throughout California, but specifically in Santa Clara County, uh, what is called Labor Code 1102.5. And Labor Code 1102.5 has been sometimes referred to as the grandfather of all whistleblower claims. And it's recently been expanded. So for example, a complaint in good faith, even if you're technically wrong in the law, because you are not required to be an, an attorney to uh, know whether or not a law is actually violated, as long as you reasonably believe it is, that would require someone who reports internally, who refuses to participate in a potentially illegal activity, or who threatens to or actually does report to a governmental agency. So it's no longer necessary, as it was in the old days, to risk your job by having to file a report and then hoping that you're not outed as part of that uh, discovery process with that agency. We actually had a case recently where the whistleblower thought he had protection for filing the complaint, and when the investigator from OSHA showed up, uh, they actually asked for the complainant by name. So you can imagine how that turned out. Not very well for the employer. So while we always encourage our clients to do the right thing, and if that includes whistleblowing to the agency, that's fine. But let's just chat about whether or not that's the best outcome. So assuming that you have filed a complaint, you have been retaliated against, what are your most available remedies there? Number one, you definitely have a right within applicable time periods, and some can be as short as six months, to file a claim in court uh, or with the administrative agency. Some of those claims could be kept secret, and we call that under seal within the false claim system, federal false claims, for example. Many claims, anonymity is not protected, and even under False Claims Act, there does come a time when uh, you will probably no longer be working at the company, but your name will be revealed. So one of the things you wanted to consider is the statutory remedy available to you for whistleblowing as opposed to the potentiality of it not being kept confidential. Uh, in a common law cause of action for termination and violation of public policy, you're entitled to all damages that you've suffered as a proximate result of that retaliatory action, and that includes past pay, 
future reasonably calculated, pay to be lost, emotional distress, and in many cases, this becomes the uh, main part of a case, and that is attorney fees. So you'll want to see if your attorney will give you a discount um, for attorney fees or a professional courtesy discount based on their attorney fees. We always think it's important. We're allowed by state bar rules to uh, include the attorney fee with uh, your recovery. But there are very strict rules that have to be followed in order to do that. So this has just been a quick overview of some employment issues that arise from retaliation. We hope that you never do suffer retaliation for doing the right thing, but it's unavoidable in many cases, and we're here to help if it does. As usual, this is an educational-only video. No legal advice is intended to be uh, conveyed here and until there is actually an attorney-client relationship. We welcome your call to Stephen Dance and Associates. This is our website. My name is Steve Dance, and I thank you for your time.